Hi everybody, just doing a quick video. Um, starting out with this, just so when it's in the thumbnail, it's a little more predominant. So I replaced the distributor on here. Obviously it's missing only because uh, when I went to replace the water pump, which is right here, I converted it to electric while I was at it. Um, I thought, well, I might as well inspect uh, the cap and rotor and turned out three of the four uh, bolts or screws that hold the cap on snapped off in the distributor. And uh, no matter what I did, I couldn't get them out with heat or ZEP 45 or anything. Uh, I wound up drilling them all out. But anyway, let's go over to the distributor or distributors. Okay, obviously the stock one on the left, the new Most Plus bought on Amazon on the right. So the only reason why I replaced the one on the left is because of the screws and it was just going to be a pain in the ass and I could just buy a brand new one. Well, unbeknownst to me, um, you, you know, it's just not that simple with these LT1s. And if you get one of these that works good, you're lucky. So my car wouldn't even start. So this one here ran fine. The only reason I replaced it is like I said. So I go to put this one on and the car just cranks and cranks, but it acts um, like it's advanced. It was really putting a lot of load on my cranking system and I, it just would not fire. And once in a while it would pop or backfire through the throttle body. So anyway, to illustrate what's going on, I took this stock one and taped the, uh, this rotor hub so that it's right where it's supposed to be. And I also did the same on this one. And side by side, you can see, as far as the advancement, this one is starting to get ahead of the screw. So I just put these screws in so you could have a point of reference. And then this almost comes straight across the bottom of that. So again, just one more time, almost a straight line across the bottom of this now, here's how it's supposed to be. So, here we are behind the screw head. And this is well before the bottom of this screw hole. So, it was advanced because your motor from the front is turning clockwise. So, this is already too far and this is right where it's supposed to be. And uh, that all boils down to, I'll try and quick show you with one hand here. It's part of the manufacturer. It's, it's like as soon as the first procedure is done when they're making these, the thing is junk. Sorry. So, take this rotor off. Ooh. Got the special tool for this. You guys can get these at AutoZone, but we gotta buy the whole rack. It's a special, it's not really a Torx. It's almost like a, let's see if the thing will focus. It won't. Try it again. It's almost like a triple square. I don't know, but you can get them at AutoZone. The whole rack looks like this. Green. It says 
E7. I'm sorry, I got a lot of tools. As you can see, I got lots of tools, but this was a new one on me, even being a Chevy guy my whole life, because I've never done an OptiSpark. So let's see, let's get the other one out. What did I do? Just sabotage myself? I sure did. So back to what ruins the whole thing. Oh, I guess I could have just done it without the rotor on. This hub, just like it has a shaft there, has a shaft that goes through the distributor body. And that's this small hollow shaft here. And then they press this hub on. As soon as they press that hub on out of clock, it's game over. So... I guess if a guy knew a way to separate and or turn it, that'd be great. But um, you might want to spot weld it. I don't know if you could fit your um, rotor back on. But with short of doing that, I all I'm going to say is if you're watching this before you do an OptiSpark, do all you can to maintain your stock base because what's going to happen here tomorrow is I'm going to let's go over here I'm going to take this countersink and I'm going to stick it in the drill and I'm going to go into these holes that I drilled out and that was a lot of fun and I'm gonna have my buddy weld them shut, and then I'm gonna re-drill them and re-tap them, all so that I have a properly clocked uh, GM usable OptiSpark. And you could either take and buy this cheap one. That's oh, one other thing. So if you have a good original Mitsubishi optical sensor, and it, or you have one that has low enough miles, definitely take, you could buy one of these for like 50 bucks. Um, take all these pieces or not, whatever. You could just buy a cap and rotor if you want. If your if you're Mitsubishi's made in Japan's optical sensor is still good. And uh, just put all new stuff on the stock base. Unless you think that this hub is real gritty when it's spinning, which this car only has 50,000 miles on it. So <laughs> I should have just not inspected the cap and I would have been fine. But who knew? So anyway, guys, I hope that answers any questions or helps you from uh, suffering the pain I did. Because the other thing I want to say is when you're going to take your coolant out of this car, make sure you have a tub or you know, something that covers this whole area underneath here because I want to drain the petcock and then, you know, any car I've done, petcock, lower radiator hose, little might come out of these heater hoses, but man, it gushed everywhere. So if you guys don't wanna if you, if you don't want a huge mess, do all you can to get that whole area, um, you know, like I bought uh, at the hardware store. You can go to, what do you call it, Walmart, buy two of these tubs or Ace Hardware, I bought this bottom tub and uh, that was, I don't know, $7 maybe, it's thin, thin wall. I think it's in the uh, garden section, but uh, put two of those side by side underneath there, and that would significantly reduce the mess that you have. But anyway, that's all I got. Hope it helps.